But, yeah, let's get into the song, Nothing But The Blood. Okay? And I'll actually bring that post up. Nothing But The Blood. Why New Calvinism has all but completely taken over the Protestant Church. Okay? And uh, here are the lyrics to Nothing But The Blood. Now, what is the thesis of this post? Neo-Calvinism or the Protestant uh, resurgence is, of course, taking over the evangelical church like wildfire. Why is that? Because the church, uh, since its very beginnings, its conception in the 4th century, has, has always been predicated on progressive justification. And um, we know how that got confused. Uh, people started reading their own Bibles, or the Bible began to be understood grammatically to a point, but all the old traditions were kept. Mm -hmm. So you have about, mm, let me see here, you're going to have, um, as things got away from the beginning of the Protestant Reformation, and you get on in years, you have colonialism, you have, uh, during the time that the pilgrims came over, the Puritans flee Europe as political refugees and, and bring their uh, Gnosticism over to uh, the shores of America. During the times of colonials and up, and up to the American Revolution, um, Protestantism was not confused. It was straight up progressive justification, uh, nothing ambiguous about it, straight up, okay? The American Revolution confuses Protestantism to the max. So moving forward, um, moving forward from the 17th century, no, I'm sorry, the 18th century, you know, the American Revolution was 17, roughly, mm -hmm. circa 1776, okay? So, right around 1776, the, the Protestant Reformations, uh, the Protestant Reformation is practiced by the Puritans uh, during colonial times, begins to be confused. Until then, there is no confusion. Colonial America was a theocracy. It was a flaming church state to the nth degree. Okay? New England, yeah, because it was just a newer version of England. Okay? You got witch hunting and the Salem witch trials and all this nonsense that they brought over like the plague from Europe. Okay, so however, Protestantism begun, begins to be confused by uh, Americanism. So what you have for the next hmm, almost 200 years, say from all of the 1900s, okay, so really a little more than a hundred years, you have a hybrid of Protestantism and Americanism. Mm -hmm. Okay? But running in the background is still the premise of progressive justification. So what you have for a hundred years is, a, a, is an American Protestantism that's confused, um, uh, that is uh, just confused in this whole idea of the individual, okay, uh, free will and the sovereignty of God, the freedom of man, and all of this stuff, you know, basic American ideals uh, mixed in with true Protestantism. But the fundamentals were always there. And the very way that Protestant American churches uh, 
uh, do um, the uh, the the order of service and the style of how we do worship or Sunday service or whatever you want to call it is predicated on progressive justification, the altar call, the the Lord's table. None of that tradition was lost. So what you have is this hundred year tradition of church going where it's a mixture of of the order of worship being modeled after progressive justification with the confusion of the freedom of man mixed in there. Okay? So, again, though, always running in the background was progressive uh, justification. Um, this is a book that I have read that I found in a bookstore an old used book entitled Disciplined by Grace by a Jeff, Jeff, uh, J.F. Strombeck. Okay? And um, this whole Disciplined by Grace thing is the whole idea that you're sanctified by justification. This whole idea continually going back to the cross to push your salvation forward or to keep yourself saved. Here it is, right here. Uh, written in 1946. Okay? So it's always been there. So what you have, and then of course you have uh, this uh, excerpts from a book written by B.B. Warfield. You know, um, the, and, and you know, there's, there's the guy who ever gave me this material years and years ago even wrote the, the, the uh, cross chart. We talked about that last week. So that's why uh, the evangelical church has been taken over wholesale um, uh, by the uh, neo-Calvinist movement. Now, as far as this progressive justification and keeping yourself saved by perpetually returning to the same gospel that, that saved you. Um, we even sang the songs. So the order of worship fitted that whole idea, and definitely all of the songs that we sang. Now, as a as an evangelical Christian, I always sat in church and thought in the back of my mind, why are we only singing songs about salvation all the time? You know, I'm saved. I, man, I wanted to see things happen, man. I wanted to see people get saved. I wanted to see people's lives changed. Okay? And in the back of my mind, I'm wondering, why are we talking about the gospel every week? Why are we so... so well, the excuse that the pastor right. gave is Here we just go. in case somebody comes to church that is right. not a believer, right. and they would have heard how to become a believer. Right. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So, here's, here's what I wrote the article about, and we sang this, and we sang this, and we sang this all the time. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I mean, it was right there. What can make me whole again? Again, when you're born again, you're made whole one time. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, and, you know, we sat in church years. But, you know, right after singing that song, if somebody... We would sing this song at the beginning of church, and then the pastor would get up and preach a sermon on once saved, always saved. And no one blinked. We weren't paying attention. But we knew church was a train wreck. Okay? We knew that it was packed full of people leading double lives. And I mean... What's the latest statistic that I heard that, that at least 80% of all men in the institutional church are addicted to porn? Okay? So, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Okay? 
Uh, reframe. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. So the blood of Jesus is a fountain. Mm -hmm. It's not like the book of Hebrews where he went once into the Holy of Holies in heaven and sprinkled uh, the blood on the mercy seat once and for all time. Right. For all sins. Okay? Not only that, uh, the, the curtain between the holy and the holies in the outer court was rent in two from the top down. The Hebrews is clear. We have access. If there's still an atonement of Christ's blood that is needed in the holy and holies, we better not be in that place, right? Right? But yet, if you do a careful word study, when the Apostle Paul talks about our bodies being the temple, temple of God, do a word study. He's actually talking about the Holy of Holies. Now put that in your pipe and smoke it. Okay? We are not sinners saved by grace. Alright, so it's a fountain. It's not a one-time sprinkling. It's a fountain of His blood because we, we need continued salvation. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was right there. Okay? But even is somebody... Honey, in every church I ever went to all of my life, I was always respected as one of the more knowledgeable parishioners mm -hmm. or leaders in the place. Okay, I remember uh, originally the small Baptist church I was in, you know, when I was going to seminary and I was helping out with the preacher, uh, w with the preaching. You know, a couple months later they were ready to kick the guy out and put me in there as pastor. And the whole, this whole time, even when I was respected and seen in that way, I will profess to you, I was clueless. I was just one of the ones who were reading, reading these words, or singing these words, and then getting up and preaching once saved, always saved. Based on one verse here and one verse there. For my part in this I see, nothing but the blood of Jesus... For my cleansing this my plea, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone. Our salvation isn't an atonement. It's not a covering. It's an ending. Nothing can for sin atone. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not of good that I have done. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So we have no righteousness other than this ongoing atonement. Totally rejects the new birth. Totally rejects the new birth. Okay? Now by this I'll overcome. Say, overcoming is a present continuance uh, intense, and that's regard to the overcoming of sin, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Now by this I'll reach home. Whoa! Whoa! I'm going to get home by a continual fountain of Christ's blood. <laughs> what? Man, we were singing this stuff and we weren't even bat blinking an eye. It's just crazy. Alright? Um, so, you're going to get home to heaven only by this continual fountain of Jesus' blood. Wow. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. All my praise for this I bring, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Okay? Now, 